This is a snap. Now normally, that's the most useful thing about the snap at the start of the video, so that I can sync the audio from the camera to the audio that's recording on my computer. But when we talk about snap actions in ClipX Pro, they're actually something that Ableton Live have been crying out for for much time. We're gonna dive into the lesson that comes with ClipX Pro, and after that, we're gonna show you a few of the other uses that you might consider using snap actions for. Let's dive straight in. <laughs> okay, so we're using the uh, lesson for using snap actions. There's a reminder, if you go to the help view in Live's menu, scroll down to packs, you'll find this actual sample set within the using snap actions, and you can click here, open the set, and maybe even play along. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just quickly run through the, the three or four parts of this live set, uh, and then we're gonna transfer back into our push DJ set that we've been building up and uh, have a look at setting up some different snap actions in there, give you some ideas of how it might be used. So snap actions are really quite simple. They're X triggers, but they can store and recall parameters at will. Now, you'll see here we've got some set default recall, set def alternate recall. Now, in this case with snap actions, actually what's within the brackets it is, the, is the modifier, it's the, the, the name of the recall. So, think of this as default being actually the snap action that's stored, and alternate is a different one. So, if you'll notice when I launch these clips, Pretty much everything has been stored there. We've got mix settings, we've got volume, we've got device control, we've got the uh, we've got all the settings on the operator there. And as you notice, because my clips are actually set to no quantize, then the action is absolutely instant. Now it doesn't just work with X clips. Let's go and have a look at effectively X cues. Uh, let's trigger the. There we go. So exactly the same, set alternate, set default. If you name your locators effectively, you have the same level of control. Now think about that, if you're playing back your live set from an arrangement view, but halfway through you want your operator uh, preset to change to a different instrument, rather than having hundreds and hundreds of versions of operator as I have seen some sets set up, you could have just the one, uh, all your MIDI clips on that particular track so you know that that track is always the one that's gonna play your MIDI and have the operator basically work through and go through your snap actions. Now, jumping from one to the other state effectively is really quite cool, but sometimes you might wanna do things a little bit differently. So, for example, launching here my set default and set alternate, this particular uh, clip here, the set alternate recall, ramps in eight, eight beats. And as you can see, merges or morphs from one state to the other. Now the set default recall ramp five is actually gonna work over 500 milliseconds and is much, much smoother. As you can see, quite impressive there. So you can set them, recall them, and you can use ramps to actually morph between them as well. Here's another way you can use them though, and you remember the Macrobat bit actions that we've looked at with racks and setting them up in that way? Well, this is a Macrobat rack and it's a snap rack. Now I'm gonna turn this off and then turn it on again. Now that's important and you may wish to have that MIDI mat because what that's done is it's actually stored the current settings into that snap rack. So now if I move the set alternate dial up, as you can see, over 120 lovely beautiful steps. Again, it morphs between one and the other. So you can think of some quite nice parameter smoothness as you move through those. And look how many parameters it's, it's moving at that same time. Wow, that's, ooh, that's in the hundreds there and we're barely registering on the CPU. So that's pretty cool. Now, actually writing these is ridiculously easy. You effectively create a clip, 
name it in the square bracket set, and then the name of the snap action that you want. Write your action that you want to collect, uh, as in all, and snap, the, the mix, and all the devices, etc. There's quite a list in the, the manual, we'll go through some examples later. And actually, let, let's do it now. So I've got this randomize all clip, and uh, like giving you a Rubik's Cube and mixing it up, let's hit it a dozen times. So there you go, could never have possibly come up with that with uh, human effort. And then we'll focus on this clip. As I said, we, we've named it set alternate two. So that's our snap action name. And we're gonna capture all uh, as a snap and the mix settings, the, all of the device settings. And as soon as I clicked it, it turns into a recall. Let's see, remember those settings? There and back, there and back, there and back. So actually what we'll do is we'll go and we'll copy that over here. Uh, let's rename it and let's do the round five. Lovely, let's go back. So we'll go there and in five beats. 